assalamu alaikum students today we will be starting the history book of class 6 and we will be reading the book world watch history and this is the book 1 of second edition and all what uh, all you have to do is just to listen to me carefully and first of all you will be acquainted with the history and uh, the meanings of history and there will be so, so certain definitions which i'll tell you you have to just listen to me carefully and inshallah you will be okay right so first of all we we'll go to the table of contents in the part 1 we will be reading the ancient civilizations the mesopotamian ancient uh, egypt indus valley and ancient china and in the part 2 we will be reading the persian greek and roman civilizations while in part 3 we will be reading about aryans kushans and guptas and in the part 4 in the final part we will be reading the rise of islamic civilization so straight away let's go to the part 1 part 1 is ancient civilization uh, here we will be having four units first is the ancient civilization that is the mesopotamian mesopotamian civilization right so in uh, part 1 uh, um, unit 1 is ancient civilizations the mesopotamian civilization right how is history studied history is the study of ancient civilizations exploring all kind of changes in human activity since the time of the use of the first writing tools history from the time of the invention of the first tools to the first written records is known as prehistory prehistory includes the stone and the metal ages which refer to the materials with which the first human tools were made primary and second resources of evidence help people understand what things were like in the past primary sources refer to the art literature photographs which are basically things that give direct information about a certain time typically because they were developed or existed at that time at the time right at that time or at the time secondary sources provide second hand information about the subject at hand and can be obtained from sources like biographies and textbook you must remember that the secondary basic uh, secondary sources about the history are the biographies and the textbooks so now we go to the word civilization a civilization refers to a group of people who live in a specific area and share common beliefs customs and practices it usually also has a particular government economy and social structure so what was life like in the land between two rivers right these are the two rivers the river of arafats uh, and tigris right so what was the life between these two civilizations around the same time that the indus valley civilization developed 5000 years ago another civilization grew up between two great rivers the tigris and the arafats which flow from the mountains of asia minor through modern day iraq into the persian gulf here you see these are the two rivers and the area in between was what mesopotamia right these great two rivers what was the, what were the rivers two great rivers were tigris and the arafats right why did the civilization develop in mesopotamia now this is the question that we should think and we should try to understand that why did this civilization first of all develop in this mesopotamia what were the reasons and what caused uh, it to become a civilization evidence of this ancient culture was buried under the deserts of iraq until uncovered by european archaeologists in the 19th century since then the numerous examples of pottery ruins and artifacts have been uncovered including around 500000 clay tablets with ancient writings on them most of which still await translations in 
and that means that most of the tablets were, that were found there uh, have not been translated yet right right <clears throat> as in the other places the people in the indus valley gradually stopped uh, being hunter gatherers uh, you understand what are hunter gatherers these were the people who, you, who used to hunt for um, having food they used to hunt other animals and they used to gather um, whatever uh, whatever prey they could find and they could hunt it and they, then they would collect it and then eat it right and so they were called hunter gatherers moving from place to place to hunt animals and gather berries for food they soon switched to living in one settlement growing crops and herding animals instead the upper part of the mesopotamia which means the land between two rivers in greeks was a good place for early farmers to settle in villages the landscape was a mixture of hills and plains and the soil was fertile with seasonal rain people could also use timber metal and stone from nearby mountains southern mesopotamia or sumer was different with marshy areas near the great rivers and flat barren plains in between there farmers had to dig chan uh, channels from the rivers to get water to irrigate, irrigate their crops and natural resources were scarce scarce you understand what is the meaning meaning of scarce scarce means very less which made trade and the exchange of goods with people from other areas significant in the region over time the farmers in sumer produced enough food to feed everyone which ma- meant that people people could which meant <coughs> excuse me uh, which meant the pe- that people could do more than just farming that are exchanging food they didn't need for other goods however unlike the people in the indus valley and the ancient egypt where the people could rely on regular flooding from the rivers indus and nile to irrigate the land sumerians could not always count on flooding to help water their crops therefore life could be harder and more unpredictable in sumer so you understand uh, this place sumer was a bit difficult area because they were not having floods and enough water to um, grow their crops so it was difficult to sustain there right this is a, a picture made a modern artists impression of a far- of farming with irrigation channels in ancient mesopotamia this is a imaginary picture that how people lived there right the, you can see these water channels made to irrigate the crops so what this girl is asking what does civilization mean anyway so this boy is replying it means a way of life where people live in cities huh is it right okay how were cities in ancient sumer constructed some of the small farming settlements in sumer gradually grew into the first cities they were laid out in a grid pattern like those of the indus valley with streets uh, sorry with a grid bit, uh, pattern like those of the indus valley with streets shops and drains leading into cesspits however unlike the indus valley cities large temples called ziggurats were built in the city city centers with wood and stone mostly available building were made from the mud bricks but ziggurats were built with specifically baked r- royal bricks the earliest temple was built in the city of uruk around 4500 ace there were colorful uh, colorful glazed bricks and tiles on the summits of the temple which were also decorated with trees and other plants in the in, in containers the sprawling sitting of uh, city or uh, city of uruk boasted 6 miles of defensive wall defensive walls with towers at regular intervals 
as its height as it as its height in about 2800 bc it may have been the largest city in southern mesopotamia with perhaps up to 80000 people living there just imagine that long ago a city which was having the population of nearly 80000 people now we go to how was ancient mesopotamia governed with an unpredictable supply of water for farming and many goods other than food being traded from outside the competing city states of the sumer often fought each other for control of trade and water they seized prisoners who could work for them as slaves their kings and priests decided how to uh, how the land should be divided and how its harvest was to be shared much work was done by the slaves and although cities sometimes grew very large the majority of the population still worked on the land understand ab samajh aa rahi hai aapko na religious beliefs and practices of mesopotamia religion in mesopotamia was traditionally polytheistic polytheistic you understand what is meant by polytheistic there are two kinds of religion one is monotheistic and then is polytheistic monothe in monotheistic religions people worship only one god while in polytheistic religions people worship more than one god where followers worshiped multiple gods that had specific strengths and areas of concerns according to mesopotamian legends human were created for the service of the gods and their lives revolved around multiple gods and goddesses according to mythology the flesh and blood of a god was added to each human thereby mesopotamians believed that there was a god in everyone the three main gods were a or enkai for wisdom and magic anu or an the god of sky and the anlil or elil the god of the earth and fates the god of the earth and fates part of mesopotamian faith was that after death one could uh, one would go to the great below which was land below the world to please the gods mesopotamians went to temples with offerings usually praying with both hands clasped together ashipu were experts who were often called to perform funerary rites and even for refreshing pictures of gods when requested by the kings right now we come to the akkadian empire if you see the map this is the map of the akkadian empire ma'am if you people want i can i can describe it in detail you can give in the um, description below that uh, or you can give in the comments that if you want we, we can study it more in a simple words around 2400 bce king sargon 1 ruler of the northern mesopotamian city of akkad succeeded in uniting all the sumerian cities into the empire the akkadian empire sargon unites his empire using methods that later rulers copied building roads between the uh, in between his conquered cities improved trade and made it easier to move troops around the uh, around to crush invasions the akkadians developed counting boards for arithmetic and were dependent on cuneiform writing to run their empire the akkadian empire lasted about 200 years that is from 2350 to 2150 bc now we go to the babylonian empire after the assyrian empire the babylonian empire was the most powerful state in the ancient world the city of the babylon babylon was what present day iraq becoming a major military power of its time between 1800 and 750 bc an influential ruler king hammurabi of babylon ruler of the babylonian empire published a code of law in the name of gods with strict punishments set out for different crimes this code helped 
regulate trade and business legally protecting the citizens of the babylon babylonian empire it says for example that if a man has put out the eye of a free man they shall put out his eye an eye for an eye this law is commonly known as an eye for an eye right this code known as the code of hammurabi is one of the oldest legal text preserved in the world this was the babylonian empire right in, uh, around 560 bc this was um, this is a sketch of the um, city of babylon uh, this is what it must have looked like the hanging gardens of babylon were said to have been built in babylon near present day hila babel hila hila babel province iraq they were said to be a series of gardens built as layers on top of each other containing all sorts of trees shrubs and vines the gardens were compared to the large green mountains built like the ziggurats from mud bricks however no archaeological evidence has been discovered to prove that they were they actually existed one source claimed that the king nebu nebu chad nazar nebu chad nazar 2 nebu chad nazar 2 built the gardens for his queen who was homesick for the garden valleys of her own land now we come over to the assyrian empire then now is the assyrian empire in around 1360 bc people from the city of ashur called the assyrians established a new empire across northern mesopotamia one reason for their success was a well organized army the mass production of wheeled chariots armed with the latest iron weapons enabled the army to move swiftly from place to place the assyrians became experts at siege warfare mining undermine their enemies enemies walls climbing <coughs> them with ladders and breaking them down with siege towers and battering arms the assyrians empire lasted from 934 to 610 bc how did ancient mesopotamia advance now we will uh, study that what were the reasons that the uh, mesopotamian uh, civilization advanced agriculture staying settled in one place with the irrigation providing fairly regular water supplies enabled mesopotamian farmers to experiment and develop agriculture they learned how to grow date trees onions and garlic mesopotamians may have been the first farmers to put fertilizer into ground to help grow crops which increased the amount of food that could be grown and traded major crops included barley lentils wheat peas olives olives pomegranates grapes and vegetables the mesopotamians also consumed barley bread honey milk go, um, milk goat lamb and fowl such as duck wheel transport wheel transport like chariots help to speed up transport so that people were not entirely dependent on slow and unpredictable sailing boats oxen pulled plows and donkeys were used for carrying loads development of system of writing the mesopotamians developed a system of writing called pictograms with different characters representing 500 things or processes to begin with writing was mostly used for keeping accounts basically the writing was used for um, keeping the accounts and trading records it was drawn with a reed stick on wet clay tablets that could be left to dry in the sun once writing developed into a system of the symbols that represented sounds it came to have many other uses the system of symbols was called cuneiform which was carved on the cylinders usually made from improved hard stone of clay you see this this writing style is known as cuneiform 
Cuneiform could be used for recording uh, stories such as the 3000 words epic of the Gilgamesh. This is a this is partly about a divine Sumerian king who uh, battles with a forest monster in his search for the secret of eternal life. Right? It is possible that the Gil Gilgamesh was the fifth king of the Uruk who built its extensive walls rather than just a legend. The poem also contains the account of a worldwide flood, which is mentioned in other ancient cultures. Advancement in science and mathematics. Scientific and mathematical ideas could also be spread through writing. Astronomers mapped the constellations for the first time, a counting system based on 60 still in the number of minutes in an hour was developed while years were divided into 12 months based on the movement of the sun and the moon with a leap year included every four years a system still in use clock dials and common uh, common system of wave and years was also developed so look how developed they were right craftsmanship art crafts excavated from the royal tombs of the city of ur show evidence that skilled craftsmen could create elaborate and artistic ornaments they used imported metals such as gold and other materials traded from from far off areas these include the blue uh, stone which is lapis lazul from afghanistan red uh, sandstorm from india and shells from the Persian Gulf, probably what is now the island of Bahrain. Now comes the trade. Mesopotamian merchants undertook months long journeys to Anatolia and Lebanon in search of rare cedar wood and may also have traded goods for lapis lazul in Oman and Indus Valley. Warfare tactics. The frequent warfare in Mesopotamia may also have led to the improved techniques in warfare and it is possible that the Assyrians developed the skill of the uh, laying siege to rival cities. Now in the, this map depicts the trade routes etc of that time. These red lines if you can uh, if you see these red lines are trade routes and the uh, uh, Sumerians heartlands are blue right and Sumerians cultural areas are depicted here in this color and you can just sit and study these that how these cities were developed.